Up days, we have been exploring some hidden gems of Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory. And if you weren't able to see the last two episodes, check out the highlights of what you missed out on. Making our way down to Crystal Springs Camp, we had some pretty full-on four-wheel driving to do to get here. But then, once you arrived, there was this beautiful spring that we explored further down to the Reynolds River. Also hiking into some of the gorges that are absolutely stunning and full of life. The camp is packed up and my hubs are locked in. Why are they still locked in? Well, I still have one more hill climb to conquer before I can start making my way to Darwin and do some fishing up there. On the way into camp, the crew I was travelling with pointed out that this hill had been a challenge for anyone towing in the past when it was time to leave. And now it was our turn to face off on the way out. Linda was first up with the idea that if I struggled, at least I would have another vehicle up the top to help out in a recovery situation. Sitting at the bottom, watching Linda struggle for traction, the realisation of how tough this hill is, is now starting to sink in. We might be here a while. Cole's road building skills never go astray. Hopefully that's all she needs. run up. Sometimes you want to be able to do it in one go and then other times you wanted things like that to happen so you get another go at it. It was really good. And I had lots of goes at it so that was good. <laughs> Alrighty, on my way. Linda just got up this hill. She had a little bit of a struggle up the top. My turn now. Let's see how we go. I'm going to choose first here and some locker action I reckon. Weave around some trees first. Both zip locks are in. Let's get around this hill I reckon I'll be fine. This tree and I'll be fine. <laughs> That's okay. We can uh, Go again. What would you suggest I do? Just back back a foot. Wait. Now turn that way. We don't try and take the hill just yet. And try and take it up from there. Battling for traction on this loose, rocky surface. Well, I think I'm going to have my work cut out for me here. Got 
my wingman out in front. He's going to help me winch. I've got a tree over here just so I can get past this loose bit here. I think I lost a bit of momentum turning around those corners to miss those trees. That's why you have a winch for uh, times like this. Tree trunk protectors around the tree, winch is out. Brian will just engage the winch and we can start moving. Okay buddy, I'm going to winch you. I'm going to pull your side in the wrong direction, but I want to winch you off that tree. The camp is just touching at the moment. He's got the remote so he can do the winching for me. Taking up the slack, here we go. Uh, mate, I'll just winch you a little first. Start driving a little. Start driving. Just listen to that 12,000 pound Ironman winch load up. At a combined 5.25 tonne of rolling mass, this is about the maximum load you want before you would switch to a double line pull. I might be able to drive a bit from here, you reckon? I'll let the, uh, the winch cable off. Just hold yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's pulled me off. I was on a little sapling at the back there with the camper trailer, so that's pulled me away from that, which is awesome. And I've just got one tree on my right here that I need to clear with the camper and after that it's a pretty good run in front. I think about doing something crazy and going even lower on those front tyres because they're not bouncing over the rocks properly. Yep. Or swollen the rocks, something your tyre floater. Still looking at them, they look like they've got way too much air in them. Okay, good. Give them a go. Yep. <laughs> Alright, I actually went a little lower again, I went to eight. Okay. You got eight all around. Um, I'm going to jump back up on the camera there. It's a really easy hill to overpower the traction. So first gear, double diff locks, looks like you're already running them. And just try and keep it slow and low. And just see how you go. If you can get moving, get going. If you can't, just see if you can crawl up, even rock the wheel a little bit left to right because you've got traction on the edges of the track a bit too. Okay, yep. Uh, and I just need to get past this tree. Yeah, yeah, I think it will straighten up. One's because all the rocks are pushing the camper away from the tree. Okay, so. okay. Cool. Be right. All right. Just give me a second, I'll jump back on my camera. <laughs> you go. Man of many talents there. Cameraman, husband, and helper to me, my wingman. <laughs> Tires are down to eight pounds. I'm just going to see if I can sneak on up past this tree. Come back and just fill some holes for you, bud. Linda's going to help me out with a bit of track building here. She's going to put some rocks in some fairly decent holes there, just enough so I can get some momentum and get going again. All right, Whitey, bring her on. <laughs> going to have another attempt after we've done some road building. Oh, cool winch. Uh, I've got a good tree here in front of me. We'll run the winch extension out to that one. Oh, you're doing good. You made it a couple meters. <laughs> That's all right. I got a. I run your cable out. I've got a couple of trees to choose from. I might even go dead straight in front of you. I think I should be able to get you all the way up to that one. Yeah, and just slowly winch. Just slowly winch your way up. The winch will pull all day long, so yeah, you might as well use it. Because it worked really well with that tree. It was just that little extra pull that I needed. Yeah, yeah. It, it's such a loose hill that once you break any traction, you, you dig a little hole and then it's sandy, so it's just spinning on the sand. Yeah, you just bury yourself in yeah. it. Yeah. Right, I'll get it sorted for you. Thanks, mate. The whole team out there working for me. How cool is that? I can concentrate on driving. Well, Brian's got the winch controller helping me out there. That is awesome. It's a wireless remote. It's so flaming. Rumbly underneath. Okay, we're gonna keep the catch up again. Toyo tyres are scratching away at this hill for dear life. 
This is a ripper of a hill to try and tow up. Alright, I can see one past uh, where Mel's standing up there. That one right on the corner, we might aim for that one. It just went you all the way, mate. Your winch is working a treat, so Mozzie is it. Kick your high idle up, give it a bit of a charge while you're waiting. Just press my idle up button, give it some juice to be able to winch me up, just a bit of extra power for it. And uh, like BJ said, there's a really nice tree in the direction I want to head uh, up near where Cole has parked. So we'll hook up to that and then I'm nearly there. So far it's taken me about 35 minutes to get to this point. So that's not too bad I suppose, towing and uh, going up a gnarly hill and winching. <laughs> Living the dream baby. slowly just so I can get a little bit of traction. I'm trying to keep in time with the winch as well, not overpower the track. You see Cole's car, I'm getting pretty excited. <laughs> yep, brakes are on your right, Tunhook. This has been a true test for the winch. It's a 12,000 pound winch, and the weight that it is pulling up this really nasty incline. My car weighs about 3.7 ton, and even though the camper trailer is really light, it all adds up. And I kind of underestimated this hill I guess you could say I was pretty confident down the bottom there but once you lose your traction and you start digging down into those loose rocks it's almost like it's bottomless but I'm nearly there I'm so close I can see the top <laughs> one more winch and I reckon we've got it in the bag well, you know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> certainly do know what I've got to do repeat of the last three or four winches, but it's okay. It's nice to have the confidence in your recovery equipment that's going to hold you safe. Alright, start driving. Wait for it, now turn, turn more passenger door. This hill climb is so loose, I would be hopelessly stuck without my winch. Right, right now, right my way. Would you check out those poor tyres? They are swallowing everything in an attempt to gain traction. Well, that wasn't part of the plan. What do you got a flat battery, Eddie? Well, uh, well, it's completely dead, is it? Yeah, mate. Right. Clutching. Pardon? Clutching. Yeah, Turn the air off. Okay. Jump start off the other one. Small problem, minor problem. My batteries are flat because we've been camped down at Crystal Springs for the last four or five days. We've only been doing day trips out, so the batteries haven't been charging properly. And we've been using the winch a fair bit up this hill and um, yeah, I've just run out of steam. <laughs> Cole's coming down to jump start me. Woohoo! It's alive! Yay! <laughs> oh, that's a relief. We'll let the battery get back up a little at the moment. And I'll winch you and I'll just tell you to pop the clutch, just, just ride it a little bit because you've only got five mm -hmm. metres and you're driving home. Yeah, yeah so uh, close. Oh, nearly home mate. <laughs> Here we go, last winch, hopefully. Okay Whitey, I'm going to pull you in the hope of the last time. <laughs> Little bit to go and I'm nearly at the top. Well done babe, that's a hell of a winch right? <laughs> that's probably uh, one of the longest ones I think we've had to do. Yeah, I reckon. That was 
<laughs> Got my cheer squad out there. That was incredible. What a flaming hill. That was nasty as. Yeah, just winched the whole way, fought me the whole way right to the top. Had a few issues here and there, but I'm at the top and to say I am pleased is an understatement. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Made it to the top. Thank you, Iron Man Winch. You just saved me. It took me about an hour to get up there. And I might have been a little overconfident at the bottom. The first uh, probably 20 meters, I'm like, yeah, got this, got this. And then it started just digging down. This uh, ground is just bottomless and you just dig these massive big holes and you can't get yourself back up and out. But uh, that winch worked a treat. Linda, when she went up, man, that was a sight to see. Well done to her. It's time to hit the tracks and head to Darwin. Goodbye Litchfield National Park, thanks for the adventure. A big thank you to National Parks and Wildlife for allowing us access into that area. And thank you Mel, he is the President of the Northern Territory 4x4 Association. You've done a wonderful job mapping out that area. And to Colin and Linda, thank you for your road building skills. We're going to mix it up a bit now. We're going to head towards Darwin, like I mentioned, to meet another club member. He is a member of the Land Cruiser Club and he doesn't have your normal tow vehicle. We're going to go out on his boat and see if we can catch some fish. Mickey Barrett from the Toyota Land Cruiser Darwin Club is the proud owner of this classic FJ55 Cruiser, which he has handed me the keys to take for a test drive. Let's go. Let's go. All right, I'll take this old girl for a spin. <laughs> I just love how like parts yeah, of it are polished, yeah, yeah. and worn from use. The key, you see, pull the key out, you, can, you don't have to turn it off, it falls out. What does it? <laughs> but like, that's the original key, and like, it's wow. just, this is the original oh, factory, wow. like, that's your factory Toyota key. That's what it key. came with. Yeah, originally. so that's 42 oh. years old, and that key is 42 years old, and it's just, that's wow. why it falls out. Um, you drive it, you go for a drive, and like, it'll fall out. Oh, God, you've got to turn the out. car off, you're like, look down. <laughs> yeah, safe travel lights, and they just drop out, yeah. Yeah, that's unreal. Yeah, it's hard, well. How long have you had it for, Mickey? Uh, two and a half years now. Okay. Two, three years, something like that. Have you done much to it? Um, maintenance. <laughs> Change springs and shocks, but I sort of want to keep it pretty stock. Yeah, pretty standard. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Going first to straight up, it's a little bit different. Here we go. Ready for lift off. <laughs> We're away. This is so much fun. Freaking got that clutch down better than me. <laughs> Actually, um, suspension's pretty similar to standard <laughs> off the showroom floor. Dash hasn't changed much. <laughs> oh man, this is so good. The steering wheel feels like a tractor steering wheel. It's massive. <laughs> Strong arm steering, no yeah, power steering in this. But it's got aircon. Aircon. That's an essential up here. Yeah, for sure. It would have been hard to get it across the line with the missus if it didn't have it. You can rip it right out. It's okay. petrol. You've got to go all the way up. Run it right out. Yeah. <laughs> What year model is it, Mickey? 1976. So it was 40 years old. Oh, yeah, 42 years old. What have we got? Four speed or five speed? Four speed. Yep. <laughs> You're often looking for the fifth one, but. It's not there. No. <laughs> nice, it's a blast from the past, that's for sure. <laughs> it's good fun. I like driving it. Yeah, good character. Are you going to slowly do it up? Spot starting to come through. There are notorious rusters. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's not many around because of that reason. Yeah. Um, this one's in not too bad. I mean, no. at least you've got all most of the parts here. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, the original owner was a one owner car. Yeah, it was right. a metal beater and a mechanic um, for 40 years. It's a 
actually come with six gearboxes, oh, two really? full sets of panels and stuff like that. That's a bonus. I've got its own little special shed just full of parts. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And this is your tow vehicle for your boat, usually? Yeah, um, they are using that. That was the excuse why I bought it anyhow. <laughs> Keep the other one locked in the shed with all the bits on it. Due to being so rare nowadays, the chance to drive one of these iconic four-wheel drives is an opportunity not to be missed. I've parked up the four bit and we are finally <laughs> on the water. We're going to fish some sensational spots around Darwin over the next couple of days and our first port of call is Point Jenny. You ready to go with me? Can't wait. <laughs> Let's do this. Looking at the sound, it's quite an interesting bottom here. A bit rubbly. Oh, uh, it's a pesky shark, I think. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Run. A bit, a bit of goldie. Golden snapper. It's a bit deep as well. It's a good size one too. You can't even see the hook. He smashed it. Look at that. <laughs> Straight down there. I think I might need the pliers for that one. <laughs> Ta da! Stripey, Goldie. Actually. Little Goldie. Yeah, Golden Snapper. Well, it's living up to its spot name, Mid Tide Goldies, I kept called it. <laughs> I'm a sounder and. Mid Tide Goldies. Yeah, that's what I caught it last time, so. As you can see, I'm really creative with naming my spots. <laughs> There we go, nice little golden snapper. Now because we're in shallow water, I can actually release this guy and he'll be fine to swim away. He won't have any uh, barotrauma at all. I'll put him on your side, Mickey, for a bit of good luck, hey? <laughs> <laughs> and I still kept your lip grips. <laughs> I have been known to send them down with the fish. Is a little bit bigger, a bigger size, nice golden snapper again. Still see him over there. We've got the puppy dogs of the ocean following us at the moment. We've somehow managed to collect a pod of dolphins on our circle around the oil rig. We've got our lines out trolling and they're hanging around. Unfortunately, when the dolphins arrive, the fish shut down. Next week, I'm on the East Coast with a travelling tip special that I've been putting together. I'll catch you then.